we're gonna put Miss Delilah down for a nap because it's her nap time. Right, Delilah? Good night. Love you. You call me a saint, but you know I'm a stranger. I will and I'm able to do what you want. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me and also talking to you guys about how I survived having a boyfriend in prison and kind of explain to you guys what it was like for those of you that are interested. I am not a makeup artist, so don't come at me with how I'm doing my makeup. If you're new here, welcome, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications if you'd like to be notified every time I post a new video. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and start um, by putting on some primer. Don't mind my granero, I will fix it later. All right, so if you guys want a boyfriend who is loyal and romantic as fuck, date someone that's in prison. Just kidding, guys. I highly do not recommend the Frankie Rose Foundation. I actually got a new one, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what the packaging looks like. So this is the packaging. This is what it looks like. comes with some little stickers and I use the neutral shape so if you guys watched my first video um, Delaney was in prison for almost two years and we kind of answered some questions I feel like I can give you guys like my perspective on how it what So when he went to prison, his mom and I drove him there um, so we could spend the last hours with him before he went into prison. He had that option or he um, had another option of going on the bus, I think it was. And he went to Sandstone, Minnesota, which is like almost, I would say almost seven hours away from Omaha. Nebraska, that's where we live. And it was really hard when we dropped him off, not only for us, but for him as well. And all we did was drop him off in the parking lot because we couldn't go in with him. So after we dropped him off, um, the first thing I did when I got home was uh, write him a letter. I looked it up and I figured out how to write him a letter and my dumbass accidentally wrote um, like the address to his prison and like the name and everything in the top left corner when I was supposed to write it in the middle so I basically sent a letter to myself because I got it and I was like what the hell like did they reject it or what happened you know so I would only visit him once a month at first I would go with his mom but then later on I would go by myself and I would drive there and they would have like odd and even days so it's like I could either way if I wanted to visit him every week I couldn't since um, odd or even according to their last name if I'm correct or their inmate number I forgot And visitation is really weird but the good thing is that you can see them like face to face and you can literally be right next to them sitting with them and everything um, we could not wear khaki colors or like um, the green because that's the colors they would wear he would wear an all khaki um, uniform during visits and I would usually go in jeans which he was at a medium prison so they allow jeans I don't know if other prisons don't allow jeans because I did see some people say like, oh, that's cool that you can wear jeans on my TikTok. Um, so I would usually wear like jeans and a t-shirt. 
and then there was a few times where i did wear like a skirt but it had to be like a super long skirt you couldn't wear little skirts it had to be maxi skirts so that's what i wore and you couldn't take anything with you you had to leave your phone either in your car or they had like these little like clear like see-through lockers and they would give you a key and you would put your stuff in there so i would put my phone in there and that's basically all i would really go in with and they would make you fill out a form like what inmate you were gonna go see and like the make and model of your vehicle and who you were and all that fun stuff they would call up people by like the order that they received the paper that you filled out and they would make you take off your shoes if you had any like jackets on you had to take them off and you would put them in this bin and it would go in and through this thing you would also walk through a metal detector and sometimes like earrings or random stuff would set the alarm off and after you entered they would um sometimes they would randomly like test you for things i don't know if it was like for drugs or what but they did that to me a few times after you entered and they checked you and you would go to like another waiting room and then they would wait till there was like at least like maybe like 10 people waiting in that waiting room and then they would take you guys all in like they would take us all in like this um these two doorways and then they would close one doorway they would mark you with like this clear pen that only the uh, blue light could see then they would close the other door and then they would let you go in and then close the other set of doors and then you would wait like in another hallway when they got an okay they would let us go inside like the visitation area and the visitation area was basically like a whole bunch of chairs and there was a few vending machines a microwave and then there was like a desk where the CEOs would sit at so you would find a place to sit wherever you wanted to sit and the inmate would come in like they literally would take like half an hour to an hour to bring them out and it was so annoying because I would tell him like why'd you take forever and he'd be like they just barely just told me to go it would be so annoying because I would just be sitting there but I would go and like make him pizzas like frozen pizza pizzas like anything you would normally see in a vending machine they had in there and so meanwhile I would make him like little pizzas or like frozen burritos I would also take out snacks and I would basically just take in uh, $20 worth of quarters because everything in that vending machine was so expensive like literally almost five dollars So he would come out and then he would sit right next to me the only thing we could do was hold hands if we wanted to but other than that he couldn't put his arm around me i remember one time he got in trouble because he was like kissing my hand and stuff and he got caught doing it twice so then they had to sit right in front of each other and it was so annoying but basically i would be there from 8 30 to 3 30 p.m all day and I would go Saturday and Sunday, and I would come back Sunday after the visit. And guys, it was such a weird time in my life. Like, I never thought I would be in that position. And I would always be like, dude, that's so ghetto. Like, I would never wait for a guy, you know? But that's why you never say never or talk shit about other people's life, because then it happens to you. So yeah, I would go once a month and then phone calls, he would call me like every other day because he would only get a certain amount of phone calls, which I think it was like 15 phone calls a month for 15 minutes. Or I mean, if he did like shorter amount of time, like let's say you called someone and it took seven minutes, you would still get those minutes. You would still get the other, uh, what, eight minutes. So it's not like you only got 15 phone calls. Yeah, the phone calls, like, they would monitor them. I remember one time they hung up the phone call. No, I think it happened, like, a few times. And I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, we weren't even talking about anything bad. Or, like, oh, my gosh. It was so annoying. And I had to download this app where I was able to get a number from the area he was at with the area code from there. Um, that way he could call cheaper because I believe it was, like, $3, like, if he was calling here in Omaha with an Omaha area code number. But once I got the 
sandstone area code number it was so much cheaper for him i think it was like a dollar a phone call or something like that and we would also communicate through this app and he said it was kind of like a kiosk and um kind of like if you were getting emails and people would type on there and and then that's how they would send it out but they oh they like rotate like they make you do different rotations only like every few hours i don't know i think it was like every two hours or something so it's not like you could be there all day either you had to go like if you were at the gym then you had to be there for two hours and then they would call like rotation and then they would let people rotate from like where they were at or like if you were outside in the yard is what they call it so it's not like you could be walking around everywhere at any time but it's really hard having a boyfriend in prison like there was times where i honestly wanted to give up and wasn't gonna be with him it was more towards the end because his dumbass got in trouble the day after christmas because they had a party uh in his room whatever in his bunk area i don't know because i guess it wasn't really like a cell it was like a big room with a lot of bunk beds and so they had a party there and his Bunky is what they call it, which is like their roommate. Basically, his roommate did tattoos, and basically, the COs went in there and just searched without like them knowing that they're gonna do that, which they can do whenever they feel like it. So, when that happened, they found like this little pipe, and it was one of his friend's little pipes. Like, it was made out of like a pencil, you know, the silver part of the pencil, and I think like a piece of paper or something. I don't know. It was a weird. It was weird how they did stuff there. They were really creative though. Out of anything, they would make something. And so they found that pipe and they tested it and it came back positive for methamphetamine. But it obviously wasn't theirs. It was um, one of his homies from there. And he obviously wasn't gonna snitch because if you snitch or if you're a snitch and you go to prison, you'll get your ass beat. So basically because it was his homies, Delaney was like, basically had to take blame for it. And, but they did a drug test on him and his came back negative. So they were like, whose is it? Like they were trying to get out of him, but he wouldn't say anything. And um, they're really mad about that. So they put him in the hole, which is like a cell where you're either by yourself or with someone. And you're in that cell for 23 hours a day. And you only get like one hour like to either go out. And I think you only shower like twice a week. So it's kind of disgusting like being in there. And you don't get any commissary, which commissary is where you can get like chips or like sop maruchans or like uh, candy and stuff like that. So he was stuck in that room, in that cell for 23 hours a day. You only got one phone call a month. So that's why I'm saying it got hard because we hardly ever spoke to each other and we were like, I felt like we were mm, distancing from each other because of that. So we would still write to each other. So he would call me once a month when he could and he was able to. And I would send him a lot of pictures to help him. Um, but that was honestly the hardest part. The hardest time for me because i really didn't get to talk to him so obviously if you don't talk to someone it's gonna be hard for you so he went in the hole the day after Christmas and he was literally there the whole the rest of his time he was in the hole So imagine being in the hole for literally for like the rest of your time, which was eight months He did eight months if I'm correct in the hole or maybe maybe more. I don't really remember He said he would do like a lot of reading He read like so many books. He doesn't even remember how many he's he read and when he went to the hole, they actually transferred him to different prisons. He was at a medium and then he was transferred to a high. 
See, it was already on like the edge of going to a high because they give you like, I think it's like so many points you can be at a medium or like low, high prison, whatever. So he, that added up to some points and made him go to a high security prison. And he was transferred to like Oklahoma and then he was transferred to like some other state and then he ended up in New York. And when he went to New York, I did want to go visit him, but he told me not to go because it was like in the middle of nowhere. And he said that there was like, he basically made it seem like it was in a mountain and he was scared that I was like gonna crash or something. And I kind of was like, okay, then I'm not gonna go because I don't want something to happen to me. And what if, and if I'm gonna be by myself, like I'm not gonna do that. So I never visited him when he went to New York and that he went to New York like maybe like when he had like four months left or so because when he was in sandstone i would visit him and he was in the hole and he would literally come out like an orange jumpsuit with handcuffs it was quite an experience I go ahead and do my eyebrows off camera because i suck at doing eyebrows and i don't know if some of you can do your eyebrows like before your makeup like i could never i don't know why like it's hard for me all right, so now I'm done with my eyebrows. I'm gonna put a little bit of eyeshadow, but I'm just gonna do something simple. Either way, I am not a makeup artist or know how to do my makeup all like super cool. So I always go with like something simple. I'm probably gonna go with the pink. So yeah, I don't recommend dating someone in prison. He went for guns, so really wasn't a big of a deal. Um, it was pretty stupid honestly and I was there when the feds came in and it was honestly the scariest day of my life And I can probably do another story time if you guys want me to if you do comment down below and let me know and I'll do a story time On um, how that went down So Like I was saying it was really hard towards the end and um but honestly, what kept us together was a little bit of communication we had. And I honestly don't know if I would have been with him because we, we were both young. We didn't have kids. And the only thing we did have was that he put his business under my name. So that's kind of what really helped me out honestly why am I gonna sit here and lie to you guys so it's not like he didn't have anything going for himself you guys either so that's another thing too if you're if you want to date someone in prison make sure they have money or something because if they don't have anything to offer then you're just gonna be there putting money in their books and I guess if you like to just talk to someone and just want someone to talk to, then I would recommend because they'd be bored. So you can get a little pen pal, prison pal, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, that was really my experience having a boyfriend in prison and like kind of how I survived. Just the last few months were really hard. And also he would FaceTime me a few times. They honestly have access to anything and everything there. All the kind of drugs, phones, like people sneak them in there for, him, for them. When he went to um, a halfway house, it was so much easier. Even though I still had to drive a bit, it wasn't too bad. And Delaney only did two years. So those of you that are holding it down for longer than two years, God bless your soul because I don't know if I could have done more than two years. Why am I going to lie? It's hard also because you don't get any love in or nothing. You're so lonely. So when Adonai went to the halfway house, he was able to get passes, which basically meant uh, he was able to leave the halfway house. But technically he was only able to leave because he was finding a job. But... That was really not the case. It was just that he was hanging out with me. And he was in Des Moines and we actually went to Adventureland and we did. We went to the mall. 
So we had to do different stuff. And then he finally got transferred to Omaha like after a month later. And then he would basically just go to work. He would have like work release. And then he was able to get like weekend passes. And then he was finally set free and now he's on like three years of probation or something like that. And sometimes I'm like, man, boy, I need another break from you. Cause man, he'd be annoying sometimes, guys. I'm gonna sit here and act like our relationship is perfect like other YouTubers do. Cause sometimes I wanna kill him. I'm gonna put some highlighter in the inner corners of my eyes. Dolly would tell me so much crazy stories of like people in prison. Like it is like what you guys see in movies, by the way. And he was with the homies is what they call him. Uh, Cause you basically could only hang out with your group of people. You couldn't be hanging out with other group of people and you would literally have to eat at your table like where all the homies sat down he would have to eat at he couldn't sit down like where the vice boss sat down if someone was in his seat he would have to make them get up from his seat and he said like that they would treat the chimos chomos whatever you want to call them which are child molesters really bad in prison but that they were they usually go to like medium prisons because they would probably get killed at the high security prisons And Delaney got like a lot of tattoos in prison. Like half of, um, from his like knee down to his ankle, he got like half a sleeve on his leg, I guess you would call it. You spent so much money guys, like you have no idea. I really didn't care because we had the cleaning business. I would not be putting that much money in his book if books if we did not have that together. He was living life in prison. He he basically told me that prison was not as bad as he thought it would be. Because he had money and because like they did things to make time go by fast. And prison did change him. It made him more mature because back then guys, he was a mess. He was a mess. I'm glad he, I'm kind of glad he went to prison. I don't know if that's nice to say, but because it made him a better person than he used to be. So I am basically done with my makeup. I usually curl my eyelashes, but they're wet right now. So I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do some setting spray real quick. put some lip gloss on i can't really do lipstick because my lips are always chapped and i try and try to keep them moisturized but my lips always want to be chapped for no reason all right so this is my final makeup look so if you guys like my story time don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video thanks so much for watching